G'day, it's Rob here again. In a recent video, I showed you this set of collets, imperial collets I got from Banggood. I reviewed them, and I got pretty mixed results. They were cheap, but they were, you know, what you'd expect being cheap. There was run out all over the place in most of them. A couple of them weren't bad. One was really bad. And, you know, if you're having a lot of money, you, you buy what you can afford. And years ago, I mean, I couldn't even afford a lathe. I mean, you know, we're lucky these days, what we can get in the way of cheap tooling. I mean, now anyone can afford a, a small lathe and tooling's as cheap as well. And some of it's really good. Most of the small lathes are extremely accurate, despite what some people say about them. And I mean, you know, everybody benefits. It means that people can do metal work that previously couldn't afford to do it. It was just too expensive. And buying a set of collets was just, you know, something you wouldn't even consider because they were just so damn expensive. Now you can buy cheap collet sets and, okay, they may not be perfect, but they're still good enough to be useful for the average guy. And the... I mean, the average guy's happy to use his scroll chuck for just about everything. A scroll chuck's only got accuracy of, well, basically 0 0.03 to 0 0.05 or 6 millimetre is your average scroll chuck accuracy. So when you get these cheap collet sets, you've got to realise that, you know, we're talking hundreds of a millimetre. It's not like huge discrepancy, but it's enough to be noticeable. And even this set, which is pretty basic and pretty cheap, it still comes within the range of your average scroll chuck, except for one collet, which was really bad. So is that it? Like, are you forever stuck with that run out? Can, can you do anything to actually make these cheap collet sets perform better? Well, yes, you can, and I'll show you what I mean. So here's one of the collets with a test piece in it. And we'll take a reading of the run out that this has got. Point zero six. I mean, that's not great, is it? Point zero six. And yeah, if we can improve on that, life would be a, a lot better. So let's do one simple thing and see if it has any effect. Okay, remember that, point zero 0.06. Now what we will do is we will undo the collet and that won't actually disturb the job. We'll back the collet right off. Then we'll get a screwdriver and we'll put it in one of the slots And we'll turn the, the collar 180 degrees. All right. Now we'll do it up again. And we'll take our reading again. Point zero 0.06 we've got a beat. We've got a lot better than 0 0.06 just by turning the collet round. Now, it could be that the collet wasn't sitting perfectly well. It could be that the tension was different. But more than likely, what's happened is that we've got an offsetting error. Now, I know for a fact that this collet chuck has got a run out of 0 0.02 millimetre. So you could say, in reality, the collet has really got a run out of 0 0.04, not 0 0.06. And basically, we had a compounding error. We had the high spots or the off-axis centre positions on the, in the same radial position. So basically they just were stacking up on one another 
if you rotate the collet around as I did, you then basically have them on opposite sides of each other radially and they will offset each other. So it's possible to actually reduce your your compounding error back to make it an offsetting error so that basically you're taking one error away from the other and you're bringing it back to centre more. This is a situation where uh, inaccurate collet chuck and an inaccurate collet can actually give you a perfect result, all things being equal. But of course, in reality, that rarely the case. What also it also means is that if you have an inaccurate collet chuck and you have the world's most accurate collet, you will still have the same amount of run out regardless of what you do because one positive and a negative together will always give you the same result, you'll get the negative because they can't offset each other. It doesn't matter which way around you go, whether it's the most accurate collet or the most accurate chuck, if the other party isn't accurate, the error factor will always remain the same. But in this case we've got two inaccurate, not massively, but there's two inaccurate components, the collet chuck and the collet. And yeah, if you can identify where the error factor radially is, and you just do it by taking a measurement and then you loosen off your chuck, rotate around your, your collets through various positions. I always go 180 and see what effect that has. Quite often, you, you know, you get lucky, but you might have to just go a third of a turn or a quarter of a turn, but it's something that you can do to actually improve the accuracy of the collets. And in this case, yeah, look at that. We've done a good job on it. It's now in a usable, or a pretty accurate um, state. Let's turn it around that half a turn again and see if we get back to that same old error. All right, now let's see what we get. Look at that, we're back to our bad old ways again. So that's all we have to do guys. You have to find out where the errors are, the two errors, and you offset them one against the other. It's pretty basic stuff, but it can get you a pretty good result even when you've got, as I said, a cheap set of collets with inherent errors in them. And uh, yeah, it, it works fine provided the errors in both um, parties are within the ballpark, you know, the same ballpark. Obviously, if you've got a massive error on one where you can only offset a certain amount, you'll always, you know, like I had one collet that had an error factor of 0.11, I mean, that was massive. And rotating the, the collet will only knock it back to, in this case it has its point, point 0.02 in the collet chart, will only bring you back to 0 0.09, okay? That's the best you're ever going to get out of it. But it's still better than 0 0.11, you know? And uh, all things being considered. So, yeah, there's your little uh, tip for the day. It's just something you can do. You can either use a test piece and set it up um, as you want to do it, as you want to use them, or you can actually use your test pieces and if the collet's only used in the one collet chuck on the one machine, you can use a die grinder and just put a reference mark on each collet in line with the reference point on the collet chuck. That way if you want to use them again, you just put them in, in, the, in, the, in that position and it's the same as referencing a chuck to a backing plate, you know, you do that, you always do that because if you ever grind the jaws you have to, you know, make sure that you keep everything constant as it was, otherwise any variation will throw out uh, the baby with the bath water, so to speak. Okay, that's it from me, hope you got something out of it, we'll see you next time, cheers.